16. The Holly Boob Prank In early 2021, a group of five men and one woman were caught hanging a tarp bearing the letter B over the W in the famous Hollywood sign in California. They tried to carry the stunt out as stealthily as possible, but by the time they got back down to the bottom of the hill, the police were waiting for them. Because the suspects didn't damage the sign, they were not charged with vandalism. They were all booked for misdemeanor trespassing and released on their own recognizance with instructions to return to court at a later time. Included among those arrested were Shag Mag CEO Julia Rose and YouTuber Jack Tenney. In all fairness, the Holly Boo prank was funny, but it wasn't just about the laughs, according to Rose, who told Vice that the group carried out the act as a form of protest against Instagram's censorship policies toward adult content. Rose's personal and business Instagram accounts, which both had millions of followers, had both recently been suspended for containing content that violates the platform's rules. During her interview with Vice, she said that she had not heard from Instagram and that its bigwigs appeared uninterested in having a conversation about her complaints. And Rose certainly isn't the only person who has criticized Instagram and Facebook for their frustratingly strict algorithms which often restrict content that is less inappropriate than a lot of the material that somehow makes its way onto the platforms without consequence. Rose also made it clear that she wasn't only acting on behalf of adult influencers, but that she was standing up for all types of creators who are being unfairly limited by social media policy. 15. Mahek Bukhari In early 2022, a 22-year-old TikToker from Leicestershire, England named Mahek Bukhari made an arguably distasteful video about how her relationship with her mother was so close that they could confide in one another about killing people. Most people initially took it as a joke. After all, who in their right mind would post something like that and actually mean it? But the seemingly satirical clip took on a disturbing new tone just weeks later when Mahek and her mother, 45-year-old Ansreen Bukhari, were charged with murder. According to prosecutors, Ansreen was entangled in a torrid on-and-off three-year affair behind her husband's back with a man less than half her age, and even younger than her daughter. Authorities accuse the Bukharis of purposely running 21-year-old Saqib Hussein off the road in a bid to hide the illicit relationship and to prevent the victim from leaking some steamy videos of himself and Asreen into the wrong hands. Riding in the car with Hussein at the time of the accident was his childhood friend, Mohammed Hashim Ijazuddin. In a harrowing 911 call, Hussein said that the two people in the vehicle chasing after him were wearing balaclavas. He screamed, oh my god, and the call disconnected as the vehicle crashed, ripped in half, and burst into flames, killing both men. At trial, prosecutor Collingwood Thompson KC described the investigation's finding as a story of love, obsession, extortion, and ultimately cold-blooded murder. He said that Ansreen wanted to end the affair for good, but Hussein couldn't accept that it was over. The scorned young man allegedly threatened to tell Ansreen's husband and sons about the relationship and to show them the videos as proof. A WhatsApp conversation recovered by investigators revealed that Ansreen turned to her daughter for help. In one message, Mahek wrote that she would have some guys jump Hussein. In addition to Ansreen's alleged desire to hide the affair, Thompson also alleged that the women carried out the murder to protect Mahek's reputation on TikTok, where she went by the handle Maybe Vlogs and had upwards of 128,000 followers. The prosecutor accused the mother-daughter duo of telling the police a pack of lies in an attempt to cover up the involvement in the crime. Thompson even said that Mahek thought her skills as a social media influencer would somehow enable her to sell a false story. 
In 2023, Mahek and Onsreen were found guilty of murder, while three other defendants were convicted of manslaughter. Mahek was sentenced to 31 years in prison, while her mother received a 27-year sentence. 14. Kayla Massa In 2018, U.S. federal investigators traced some stolen money orders from the Berlin, New Jersey post office to a civilian bank account. When the individual, known only as JK, was brought in for questioning, they revealed that a young woman with a large social media following had offered to pay them up to $5,000 for letting the influencer's friend use their bank account. Kayla Massa, who had more than 330,000 followers at the time, told JK that her friend needed to use the bank account for legitimate reasons relating to their clothing business. It sounded like quick, easy money, so of course the person agreed. They met up in person, and JK handed over their debit card, PIN number, and the login credentials for their banking website. In reality, Massa and several co-conspirators allegedly deposited stolen money and checks into the bank accounts that people allowed them to use. To recruit new participants, the group frequently advertised on social media accompanying their posts with tantalizing photos of things like wads of cash and people casually swiping debit cards without a care in the world. In JK's case, the bank realized that the nearly $2,500 in stolen money orders that were deposited to the account were fake. By then, the money had allegedly already been removed from the account by Masa. The bank recalled the funds, leaving JK in the red and confused about the situation. When JK tried to reach Masa, she had been blocked, giving her no choice but to cut her losses and move on. According to federal authorities, Masa and her accomplices knew they were removing the money from people's bank accounts before the checks cleared. The suspects were accused of using the cash to buy real money orders in an attempt to launder the ill-gotten funds while leaving their victims to deal with their overdrawn bank accounts on their own. Some victims had to pay the money back, while others ended up having the bills sent to collections. And in many cases, their bank account was closed. In addition to the so-called card-cracking scheme, Massa was accused of scamming local businesses with fake checks. In early 2020, federal authorities arrested her and several suspected accomplices on suspicion of conspiracy to commit bank and wire fraud. The case appears to be ongoing, and in 2023, state authorities charged Massa and at least three others in connection with a check fraud mail theft scheme, which reportedly scammed innocent victims out of more than $600,000. 13. Trevor Daniel Jacob YouTuber and former Olympic athlete Trevor Daniel Jacob had multiple cameras rolling when he crashed his small plane in California in November 2021, including wing and camera tails. Equipped with a parachute, he jumped from the plane with a selfie stick in hand. He then hiked to the crash site and collected his cameras. Jacob later posted the footage on YouTube, where he claimed he experienced engine failure while flying over the Los Padres National Forest in Santa Barbara County. In the meantime, he reported the crash to federal authorities as required by law and was told he was responsible for preserving it. He claimed he didn't know where the wreck site was located, but that was clearly a lie, considering the fact that he had already been there once. Instead of complying with orders to preserve the wreck, Jacob removed it from the forest with help from a friend with a helicopter. They plucked the plane out of the woods piece by piece in an apparent effort to thwart the ongoing investigation into the case. The plane was cut up into pieces and thrown away in the trash. Detectives eventually concluded that Jacob had crashed the plane on purpose as part of a sponsorship deal to promote a wallet company. By then, many people who had seen the video also suspected that the accident was staged. Jacob seemed too prepared for it, since most pilots don't routinely fly wearing a parachute, and he was far more preoccupied with capturing the incident on film than most people would be in the midst of a legitimate emergency. People also wondered why he didn't try to glide the plane to a safe landing spot, 
and while Jacob was already known for outrageous stunts, like skateboarding off a friend's roof into a pool and paragliding naked, his fanbase seemed far less entertained by the fact that he might have deliberately crashed an airplane. Authorities charged Jacob in federal court, and the FAA revoked his pilot's license. And he went radio silent on social media while his case played out. He ultimately pleaded guilty to destruction and concealment with the intent to obstruct a federal investigation. Jacob's defense attorney urged the judge to spare his client from prison time and to sentence him to probation instead. He argued that Jacob was living in his airplane hangar throughout the COVID pandemic and that he made a series of bad decisions which culminated in him deciding to crash the plane. The defendant apologized and acknowledged the wrongfulness of his actions, but made sure to point out that he carefully researched the plane route in order to place the wreck far from human housing and trail routes. Jacob also mentioned that his pilot's license had been reinstated, but the 30-year-old's attempts to persuade the judge into leniency failed to keep him in the free world, and he was sentenced to six months in federal prison. 12. Modo Adams on the surface, 25-year-old British influencer Modo Adams was living a life many dream of as a jet-setting international playboy who spent time in glamorous cities all over the globe. But he was apparently taking big risks to finance his lifestyle. And in September 2023, he was arrested at George Chavez International Airport in Lima, Peru after being caught with nearly three kilos of cocaine. Adams was allegedly trying to smuggle the drugs to London in a false compartment in his suitcase. In surveillance footage of airport security searching his luggage and making the discovery, Adams appeared to seem just as confused as most people who are caught with drugs at the airport, and still not ready to accept the fact that they're busted. But in Peru, authorities like to resolve these cases as quickly as possible, and Adams soon dropped the dumbfounded act. Less than 24 hours after being caught, he appeared in court and admitted to drug trafficking. He was promptly sentenced to nearly seven years in prison. In some past cases of British nationals being sent to prison for smuggling in Peru, prisoners have been released early to their home country to finish out the remainder of their sentence on parole. It appears to be too early on in Adam's case to predict whether he'll get that opportunity. For now, he has no choice but to languish behind bars in Peru and hope for a quicker end to his case than the release date he's currently looking at. In the meantime, his social media accounts have been shut down. 11. Lena Lutfiawati, aka Lena Mukherjee. Better known to her fans as Lena Mukherjee, 33 year old Indonesian foodie Lena Lutfiawati built a following of millions with TikTok videos showing off her delicious meals. It sounds like the last thing someone would get arrested over, but that's exactly what happened in March of 2023, when she posted a video of herself eating pork rinds in Bali. During the clip, she could be heard saying, Bismillah or in the name of Allah, before she began eating. In a country with a 90% Muslim population and where eating pork is highly taboo, Lena's video was not well received. The country's top Muslim clerical body, known as the Indonesian Ulema Council, issued a ruling calling the footage blasphemous. The complaint prompted a police investigation leading to criminal charges against Lena. In September 2023, six months after the video first appeared on social media, Lena was sentenced to two years in prison. She was also fined the equivalent of $16,269, which is a lot of money considering that the average annual salary is about $4,300. If she fails to pay the fine, her prison sentence could be extended by several months. Following her sentencing, Lena tearfully told reporters that she regretted her actions, but didn't think that she would receive a two-year term. She said she may file an appeal if doing so is an option. 10. Brandon Straka 
In 2018, a gay hairdresser from New York City named Brandon Straka went viral for creating a powerfully worded video about why he felt pushed out of the Democratic Party. The footage sparked a movement called the Walk Away Campaign, which saw like-minded people choosing to disassociate from left-wing politics after deciding that their party had failed them. But Straka's movement wasn't just about getting disillusioned Democrats to reconsider their loyalties. It was also recruiting people into the right-wing faction of American politics. Upon realizing this, some people walked away from the walkaway campaign, while others became even more committed to it. Since then, Straka has continued to voice his increasingly controversial views. And let's just say that it wasn't exactly surprising when he was present at the January 6th riot on the U.S. Capitol in 2021. He was also among the many who were arrested for their accused participation in the rebellion. According to court documents, Straka encouraged fellow protesters to take a policeman's shield from him. The conservative influencer allegedly tweeted throughout the event, which made it easier for later investigators to tie him to the day's events. Straka is not accused of participating in the actual breaching of the Capitol or any other violence that took place that day, but prosecutors would later claim that he used his far-reaching social media presence to encourage his 500,000 strong follower base to attend the riot. In October 2021, the 45-year-old pleaded guilty to one count of disorderly conduct. He was lucky enough to avoid actual prison time, but was ordered to serve three months on house arrest, followed by three years of probation, which means he'll remain under the watchful eye of law enforcement until sometime in 2025. 9. Ruby Frank and Jody Hildebrandt 41-year-old Mormon mother of six, Ruby Frank, gained internet fame as a mommy blogger following the debut of her YouTube channel, Eight Passengers, in 2015. She quickly amassed a following of more than two and a half million subscribers, some of whom applauded her unusually strict parenting style. But it was this heavy-handed approach to running her household that ultimately proved to be Frank's downfall. Viewers first became concerned that she was taking it too far in 2020, when she banned her teenage son from sleeping in his bedroom for seven months, relegating him to a beanbag chair in a common room. She also attracted criticism from her audience for withholding food, saying that Santa would bring presents for some kids but not others, and threatening to cut the head off of a stuffed animal. At first, Frank and her now estranged husband, Kevin, accused people of blowing the situation out of proportion, but her YouTube channel began to lose viewers. And in 2022, Ruby and Kevin separated. In an effort to rebrand her image, Frank became a mental health counselor for her best friend, Jody Hildebrandt's company, Connections. The pair offered a variety of services, including marriage counseling and one-on-one -on -one sessions, and they started a new YouTube channel in hopes of restoring their status as influencers. In 2023, the allegations against Frank and Hildebrandt went from being controversial to criminal in nature. The women were both arrested on a slew of felonies, and in December 2023, Frank pleaded guilty to reduced charges in exchange for her willingness to testify against Hildebrandt. As part of the plea deal, she will serve prison time, but has yet to be sentenced. In an unexpected twist, Hildebrandt decided to plead guilty just days after Frank entered her pleas. Both women are awaiting sentencing. In light of the ongoing cases, Frank's 20-year-old daughter, Sherry, has spoken out against her mother for the treatment she claims she received. Around Christmas time, Sherry revealed to her own followers that she was experiencing mixed feelings as she awaits her mother's sentencing. She has been estranged from Ruby for quite some time, but is still affected by the situation and working through emotional trauma. Frank and Hildebrandt's families aren't the only ones who are still recovering after the treatment they received from the women. Speaking with People magazine, therapy client Adam Paul Steed claimed that Hildebrandt violated his confidentiality by passing his personal business on to the Mormon Church and Bingham Young University, which is also a Mormon institution. 
The effects were life-ruining for Steed, who was removed from the university, banned from attending church, and alienated from the Mormon community. 8. Rossi LaRothio Adams II While attending college at Iowa State University in 2015, influencer Rossi LaRothio Adams II, also known as Polo, started a company called State Snaps. It was essentially a website and collection of social media accounts which shared risque photos of college students partying. Even after the university made it clear that they disapproved of what Adams was doing, he continued doing it, garnering over a million followers at the height of his success. Adams owned the web domain doitnumber4state.com, but he was determined to somehow take ownership of doitforstate.com. He expressed an interest in buying it from its owner in Cedar Rapids, who refused to sell it. Unwilling to take no for an answer, Adams hatched a plot to steal the URL at gunpoint. He tracked down the owner's home address and recruited help from his cousin, Sherman Hopkins Jr., who agreed to carry out the actual robbery. In 2017, Hopkins entered the victim's home and found him hiding in his bedroom, where he had retreated after he heard someone breaking into his house. With written instructions in hand from Adams detailing how to transfer ownership of the domain, Hopkins ordered the victim's cooperation at gunpoint. But the victim fought back and tried to wrestle the gun away from Hopkins, who shot him in the leg. He managed to gain enough control to shoot Hopkins multiple times in the chest, bringing the home intrusion to an unexpected end. Hopkins survived his injuries and was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Adams went on trial in federal court and was convicted of conspiracy to interfere with commerce by force, threats, and violence. He's currently serving a 14-year sentence bringing his days as a high-earning influencer to an abrupt end. 7. Fatima al Momin. During the early morning hours in August 2023, Kuwaiti architect-turned-fashion influencer Fatima al Momin allegedly blew through a red light and crashed into a car carrying four occupants. All four victims were taken to the hospital, where two of them died from their injuries. Almoman was arrested at the scene and later charged with 10 crimes, including manslaughter, accidental injury, driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, passing a red light, speeding, reckless driving, driving without insurance, driving without a license, and damaging property. Almost immediately after the crash, the 30-year-old disabled all comments on her Instagram. Needless to say, her more than 2 million followers won't be hearing from her for a while. Several months after the accident, Al Momin was convicted of manslaughter, speeding, running a red light, and other charges. She's currently serving a three-year prison sentence. According to news reports, a toxicology test proved that she was not under the influence at the time of the crash, and the charge was dropped accordingly. 6. Douglas McKay, aka Ricky Vaughn As the 2016 U.S. presidential election approached, a pro-Donald Trump social media influencer going by the name Ricky Vaughn amassed a following in the tens of thousands. His real name is Douglas Mackey, and he allegedly tried to suppress the votes of an unknown number of women and black Americans by encouraging them to vote by text. According to authorities, Mackey messaged and advertised on social media, claiming that people could skip the lines at the poll by texting Hillary to a five-digit number. As you may or may not know, the United States does not allow people to vote through text. While it's unclear whether Mackey's scheme effectively discouraged anyone from voting, prosecutors said that at least 4,900 phone numbers sent text messages to the number that said Hillary or something similar. Mackey was charged with conspiring to deprive people of their constitutional right to vote and chose to take his case to trial. Prosecutors accused him of having an established history of believing that women and African Americans are confused and unintelligent. They also argued that Mackey doesn't think women should vote and that he has vocalized these views on social media and in podcasts. 
In court, the controversial accused criminal was confronted with several past tweets calling African American people gullible and accusing them of believing everything they hear. In response, Mackey described his tweets as hyperbole and tried to downplay the nature of his words, stating, I exaggerate a lot on Twitter. In early 2023, a jury found the 33-year-old guilty of the conspiracy charge. Mackey could have faced up to 10 years in prison, but the judge imposed a seven-month term and fined him $15,000. Naturally, many of his right-wing followers believe he's been unfairly victimized by the American justice system. While others probably wouldn't have minded if he had received a harsher punishment. 5. Lee Su Bai Once nicknamed the Stock Goddess on social media, Korean influencer Lee Seul Bai first became popular in 2015 for providing her followers with financial advice. By all appearances, she seemed to know what she was talking about. The now 37-year-old was living a life that many people only ever dream of, with luxury cars, designer duds, expensive jewelry, and all the other things that people believed she could afford thanks to her wise investments. As proof of her money savvy, Lee posted images of certain financial records on social media. Over a several-year period beginning in 2017, she allegedly used these credentials to persuade people to take advantage of her investment opportunities. She obtained the equivalent of more than $8.7 million from people who trusted her to make profitable moves with their money. But in reality, she wasn't very good at investing. In fact, she was pretty terrible at it. At some point over the years, Lee had an increasingly difficult time maintaining the illusion of an accomplished stock whiz. She began running out of money and became unable to pay some of her most basic bills, including her credit cards. The law eventually caught up with Lee for her fraudulent activity, and in 2023, she was sentenced to eight years in prison. At her sentencing hearing, the judge noted that she appeared unremorseful for scamming dozens of people out of their hard-earned money, which he reportedly took into consideration while deciding on the woman's sentence. She has since disappeared from social media and is quietly putting her life together from rock bottom. 4. Ramon Abbas, aka Ray Hush Puppy. According to his social media, Nigerian influencer Ramon Abbas, better known to his fan base as Ray Hush Puppy, was a wealthy real estate investor. The 40 year old flaunted his luxury lifestyle at every possible opportunity, frequently posting photos of himself with private jets, fancy cars, and wads of cash being thrown around. But Abbas was not a real estate developer. According to U.S. federal authorities, he was a career scammer who stole money from companies in America and elsewhere through various hacking schemes. In one scam that yielded a jaw-dropping $923,000 profit, Abbas and an accomplice tricked a New York law firm into wiring money to accounts he controlled by spoofing a paralegal using an email address that appeared to belong to a legitimate client. The scammers emailed instructions to the paralegal on how to send the money, and voila, it fell into the criminal's hands. Abbas defrauded multiple other victims, including a British soccer club, a Qatari businessman, and others. Altogether, the amount of money he's stolen and laundered is believed to total in the tens of millions of dollars. In recent years, federal investigators traced Ramon to some of his co-conspirators through the contact information he openly displayed on Instagram. They were also able to confirm the birthday he used in a past U.S. visa application based on photos he posted of himself indulging in a lavish celebration. In June of 2020, United Arab Emirates investigators apprehended Abbas at his upscale apartment in Dubai. He was turned over to the FBI and extradited to the U.S. to face federal charges in connection with his crimes. Following his arrest, law enforcement seized a treasure trove of evidence, including a list of victims' email addresses and electronic devices. They also recovered $41 million, along with 13 cars worth nearly $7 million. In 2021, 
Abbas pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to engage in money laundering. He was sentenced to 11 years in federal prison. Three, Mickey Lynn Fox. Over a five-year period, beginning in early 2015, Houston-based influencer Mickey Lynn Fox went by at least two different social media aliases, including Michaela Pink and Summer Black. She advertised herself as a dating coach, but according to investigators, her main scheme was stealing money from people through bogus real estate investment opportunities. Fox's sale pitch involved persuading victims in multiple states to give her $35,000, which she claimed she would use for flipping houses. She promised quick and large returns and would provide her targets with small payouts to prevent them from starting to suspect that they might not see their money ever again. And when people began to ask questions about why the property she told them she was using their money for wasn't on the market, she allegedly made up excuses and eventually ghosted the people who were trying to reach her. In reality, Fox spent the money on herself. She did not use it in the ways she had promised, and nobody ever got their investments back. Prosecutors accused Fox of defrauding at least eight investors out of more than $136,000. Speaking with ABC 13, Assistant U.S. Attorney Sheila Hansel said that people fell for Fox's deception because she was very charming and because she seemed like an important person based on her social media personas. One duped investor, who was too embarrassed to share his name, told the news outlet that he invested with Fox because they had a mutual friend who had invested and was seeing returns. In hindsight, he said that the whole situation seemed funny. In 2022, Fox pleaded guilty to aggregate theft. She could have faced up to 20 years in prison, but received a five-year sentence. 2. Bakari Bronze Ogaro Some people can't seem to pull themselves away from social media, even when their use of it has a detrimental impact on their life. One such individual is 19-year-old British TikTok prankster Bakari Bronze Ogaro, better known as Mizzy, found himself in legal trouble in May of 2023 for sharing videos of people on social media without their consent. He's also been accused of violating people in other ways, including on one occasion when he allegedly entered a stranger's home unannounced. The judge overseeing the teen's case ordered him to stop featuring footage of people without their permission. Just hours after the court hearing, Ogaro violated the order by filming himself as he walked through a shopping center and mocked British law as a joke. He also posted Snapchat clips of himself grabbing a student by their uniform and trying to fight someone with dwarfism. Ogaro's new content was soon discovered by authorities, landing him back in the courtroom on several counts of breaching the order. In October 2023, the judge banned him from using social media entirely except for private messaging. The aspiring influencer insisted he had permission to film the videos he posted on social media, but the judge didn't buy the claim. He accused Ogaro of deliberately challenging the order and convicted him on two of the violation counts. While announcing the ruling, the judge admonished the defendant for crossing the line in ways that warrant time behind bars. Ogaro was nevertheless released until his sentencing date about a month later, when he was ordered to serve 18 weeks in jail. The judge commented on how the defendant was behaving outrageously in an attempt to get famous. Before sending Ogaro along to serve his time, he left him with some straightforward parting words. Put bluntly, your pranks are not funny. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Danielle Miller Like many other Americans, 32-year-old Instagram influencer Danielle Miller got greedy during the COVID-19 pandemic when it became easier than ever for people to fraudulently acquire money from the U.S. government. According to federal authorities, she used at least 10 stolen identities to obtain pandemic relief loans that she wasn't entitled to. To get her hands on the money, Miller had several driver's licenses bearing her photo along with her victim's personal information. 
She also applied for relief funds using fake business names. And based on the glamorous lifestyle Miller showed off to her more than 34,000 followers on social media, it wasn't hard to see where the money was going. She rented a luxury apartment, stayed at five-star hotels, chartered private jets, and, of course, bought high-end cars and expensive designer clothes. Many of these transactions were carried out using the victim's stolen identities. But the fun and games ended when the feds arrested Miller on suspicion of stealing over $1.2 million in relief money that she didn't qualify for. In a statement, prosecutors accused Miller of committing large-scale fraud in an effort to bolster social media image. They were also happy to remind her that curating a high-society image isn't something that should be done on the backs of hard-working taxpayers. In 2023, Miller pleaded guilty to three counts of wire fraud and two counts of aggravated identity theft. She was sentenced to five years in federal prison, followed by three years of probation. She'll also be required to pay restitution in an amount that has not been decided yet. 14. Mahek Bukhari In early 2022, a 22-year-old TikToker from Leicestershire, England named Mahek Bukhari made an arguably distasteful video about how her relationship with her mother was so close that they could confide in one another about killing people. Most people initially took it as a joke. After all, who in their right mind would post something like that and actually mean it? But the seemingly satirical clip took on a disturbing new tone just weeks later, when Mahek and her mother, 45-year-old Anzreen Bukhari, were charged with murder. According to prosecutors, Anzreen was entangled in a torrid on-and-off three-year affair behind her husband's back, with a man less than half her age and even younger than her daughter. Authorities accused the Bukharis of purposefully running 21-year-old Saqib Hussein off the road in a bid to hide the illicit relationship and to prevent the victim from leaking some steamy videos of himself and Ansreen. Riding in the car with Hussein at the time of the accident was his childhood friend, Mohammed Hashim Ijazuddin. In a harrowing 911 call, Hussein said that the two people in the vehicle chasing after him were wearing balaclavas. He screamed, oh my god, and the call disconnected as the vehicle crashed, ripped in half, and burst into flames, killing both men. At trial, prosecutor Collingwood Thompson KC described the investigation's findings as a story of love, obsession, extortion, and ultimately, cold-blooded murder. He said that Ansreen wanted to end the affair for good, but Hussein couldn't accept that it was over. The scorned young man allegedly threatened to tell Ansreen's husband and sons about the relationship and to show them the videos as proof. A WhatsApp conversation recovered by investigators revealed that Ansreen turned to her daughter for help. In one message, Mahek wrote that she would have some guys jump Hussein. In addition to Ansreen's alleged desire to hide the affair, Thompson also alleged that the women carried out the murder to protect Mahek's reputation on TikTok, where she went by the handle Maybe Vlogs and had upwards of 128,000 followers. The prosecutor accused the mother-daughter duo of telling the police a pack of lies in an attempt to cover up their involvement in the crime. Thompson even said that Mahek thought her skills as a social media influencer would somehow enable her to sell a false story. As of May 2023, the Bukharis and six other defendants remain on trial, with each suspect facing two counts of murder. 13. Zachary Latham 18-year-old Zachary Latham became TikTok famous for his love of cars. It was the same passion that caused his neighbor, Catherine Tiffany Durham, to approach him outside their Vinland, New Jersey homes one day in 2020 and scold him for driving too fast down their street. During the heated exchange, Durham demanded that the young man slow down behind the wheel. Latham captured the interaction on video and posted it online, referring to his neighbor as a Karen. The clip went viral, garnering over 3 million views in just a few days' time and helping Latham gain over 40,000 new followers. Meanwhile, the neighborly dispute escalated. 
Durham's husband, William Timmy Sr., and the couple's two sons got involved, but Latham showed no signs of backing down as he continued to ridicule the family on social media. In one video, he accused Durham's son of aggressively confronting him, mockingly stating that Karen's son had tried pulling him out of his car. Of course, the allegations went both ways. About a month after the initial confrontation between Latham and Tiffany Durham, the Durhams accused Latham of trying to run one of their sons off the road. The family called the police, and Tiffany told responding officers that Latham gave her a black eye, which the young man denied. No arrests were made and law enforcement left the scene. The feud reached a tragic tipping point later that day when the Durhams confronted Latham at his house. Latham answered the door armed with a stun gun and a knife, while his wife, Sarahi, recorded the encounter. A loud fight broke out, prompting several neighbors to dial 911. The incident ended with Latham fatally stabbing Timmy Sr. In a panicked 911 call, Latham said he'd just been assaulted. He admitted to the stabbing, later telling detectives that he felt he was the victim of a mob attack, despite the Durhams being unarmed. Latham was charged with manslaughter. To prevent him from continuing to broadcast the situation on TikTok and to the media, the judge overseeing the case imposed a gag order, banning him from commenting on the case. Throughout his trial, Latham maintained that he acted in self-defense. The jury agreed, and he was acquitted of the whole charge. While Latham managed to avoid the worst possible outcome, which would have included prison time and a damaging criminal record, he still had to cope with the fallout of going public with his dispute and the massive amount of media attention the case attracted. He also has to live with knowing he killed someone, which is a painful reality for most people to come to grips with even in cases that are deemed justified. 12. Ashley Guillard With every headline-making crime, comes a slew of people who think they have it solved before all the facts are even available. The quadruple murder of four college students in Moscow, Idaho in late 2022 was no exception. Zana Kanodal, her boyfriend Ethan Chapin, and Kanodal's roommates Madison Mogan and Kaylee Goncalves were viciously stabbed to death during the early morning hours of November 13th as they slept in their beds at the off-campus house they all shared. As weeks went by without any arrests, members of the public tried to get to the bottom of the case. And while many people came up with perfectly logical theories, others completely missed the mark. Included among the armchair detectives who mistakenly thought they were one step ahead of law enforcement was a TikToker and self-proclaimed psychic named Ashley Guillard, who posts videos under the username Ashley Solves Mysteries. The tarot card reader from Texas pinned the murders on Rebecca Schofield, an associate professor and chair of the University of Idaho's history department. According to Guillard, Schofield had a romantic connection with Casey Goncalves and ordered the murders in a bizarre revenge scheme. While many of the details of the investigation are being kept under wraps, there's not even been a hint of authorities suspecting Schofield in the case let alone the TikToker's theory being based on tangible evidence or sound logic. Guillard doesn't know Schofield personally, and her reasoning behind why she thinks the professor is the killer is shaky at best, but she was confident enough in her opinion to share it with the world. And it backfired when she was slapped with a defamation lawsuit. Schofield, who was ruled out as a suspect early on in the investigation, accused Guillard of spreading harmful and false statements about her alleged connection to the murders. In the lawsuit, she said that she'd never even met the victims. She claimed that Guillard's accusations had caused her to suffer significant emotional damage and fear for her life, as well as the safety of her loved ones. The professor requested an unspecified amount of damages, including compensation for the security system she'd installed at her home, as well as a reimbursement for court costs. News of the court case broke just days before authorities arrested former criminology PhD student Brian Koberger as the prime suspect in the case. The court granted Schofield's motion for a default judgment in her favor in early 2023, after Guillard failed to formally respond to the lawsuit. Guillard has since countersued, accusing Schofield of ruining her reputation and claiming that she made the statements against Schofield out of a well-intentioned concern for public safety. 11. Matthew Price Thanks to social media, 
more everyday people are becoming celebrities than ever before, and they're doing it largely through their own talent and ingenuity. A 27-year-old magician and comedian from Los Angeles named Matthew Price was among the countless individuals who tried to take advantage of what seemed like a more level playing field in the widespread pursuit for fame. Price left Fort Myers, Florida for LA in 2016, hoping to make it big with his gift for entertaining and making people laugh. To supplement his live work, he began to promote himself on TikTok, and it certainly helped to get him noticed. The ambitious jokester gained a following of more than 145,000 fans through his videos, which came in especially handy when the COVID-19 pandemic put an indefinite end to live performances. It's hard to make it in the cutthroat and competitive world of showbiz, especially while working to keep up with LA's infamously high cost of living. At one point, Price's mum, Danuta Ritchie, encouraged him to take a break and return to Florida. Ritchie later told the Fort Myers-based news press that her son had no such plans and that he made it clear that he would stop at nothing to achieve the fame and fortune he'd dreamed of since childhood. He had no way of knowing that just days before Thanksgiving in 2021, someone would rob and kill him in the street during a routine snack run to a convenience store near his apartment. Surveillance footage captured the moment Price Carl laughed after being shot in the leg. He was rushed to a nearby hospital where doctors tried to save his life, but he bled to death from his injuries. There was a festival going on nearby, and the area where Price was killed is reportedly known as gang territory. But he wasn't known to be involved in any gangs, and his only offense that night was to innocently walk to a store for a bite to eat. Sadly, the killer remains at large. The Los Angeles Police Department is offering a $50,000 reward for information leading to the suspect, who investigators believe lives in the area where the crime occurred. 10. Anthony Baranjas Hailing from the greater Los Angeles area, TikTok star Anthony Baranjas accumulated a following of nearly a million fans with his lip-sync videos, humorous skits, and thoughts about relationships and heartache. The social media community was shocked when the 19-year-old and his friend, 18-year-old Riley Goodrich, were ruthlessly gunned down at a movie theater one evening in July of 2021. In what can only be described as a real-life horror scene, the pair were shot execution-style while watching the horror film The Forever Purge at a theater in Corona in Riverside County. An employee found Goodrich and Baranjas in their seats after the movie. Goodrich was pronounced dead at the scene, and Barajas died in a hospital several days later. Authorities quickly zeroed in on a 20-year-old man named Joseph Jimenez as their prime suspect, but they were hard-pressed to identify a motive. According to investigators, Jimenez and the victims didn't know each other. Detectives eventually concluded that Barajas' social media fame most likely didn't play a role in the shooting. Despite the lack of a clear reason for the double murder, they had enough evidence to arrest Jimenez, so they booked him into custody on two counts of first-degree murder and various other charges. He pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Details of the shooting have slowly come to light throughout the suspect's court proceedings. During a preliminary hearing in 2022, several friends of Jimenez who were at the theater on the night of the murders testified that he was acting strangely. A witness named Julian Velasquez told the court that Jimenez was staring blankly and muttering to himself after their group arrived at the theater, and that his behavior became even more bizarre throughout the film. Velasquez described how Jimenez was allegedly glaring at his friends, like he wanted to punch them in the face and for no apparent reason. During the movie, Jimenez reportedly left and returned with a backpack. Fearing he had a gun, another friend named Ramon Feliz took the backpack away. Feliz took the stand during the hearing and said that he wouldn't have returned the bank to Jimenez and he would have alerted authorities if he had any idea that the defendant was seriously planning to shoot anyone. At some point before the show ended, Feliz and Velasquez became so disturbed by their friend's behavior that they snuck out of the theater, leaving him behind. They later saw Jimenez run out of the theater and speed off in his car. The court case and investigation are ongoing. 9. Sanya Khan 
One of TikTok's biggest selling points is its abundance of raw, first-hand stories from people who find the strength to share their most painful and personal experiences with the world. One such individual was Sanya Khan, a first-generation American who was born in 1993 to parents who came to the United States from Pakistan. In 2021, she married her boyfriend of five years, Rahil Ahmad. The couple moved from Sanya's hometown of Chattanooga, Tennessee to Chicago, where she worked as a photographer. What was supposed to be the beginning of a long life together quickly turned into turmoil. After the wedding, Ahmed allegedly began displaying major signs of mental instability. Sanya remained quiet about the couple's worsening problems as she tried to make her troubled marriage work. Her close friend, Brianna Williams, later told the BBC that some of Sanya's friends encouraged her to leave Ahmed, while others urged her to try making the marriage work. She filed for divorce six months after her wedding in December 2021, following a particularly scary incident that caused her to seriously fear for her safety. It was a tough decision for Sanya, who was raised in a conservative culture that deeply frowns upon divorce. Knowing that other women from her background likely experienced similar feelings of failure, shame, and isolation, she bravely shared her story on TikTok. Sanya quickly amassed tens of thousands of followers as she discussed the reasons why she left her marriage, including her husband's abusive behavior and his alleged refusal to get mental help. She described feeling like Ahmed's problems became hers and hers alone to deal with while grappling with the worrisome prospect of leaving him and being subjected to the stigma that divorced women in her culture often face. After filing for divorce, Sanya changed her locks and got a restraining order against Ahmed. Meanwhile, she continued telling her story, often venting about how she felt like a black sheep of her community. In one post, she said that some relatives told her that she let the devil win by ending her marriage. They allegedly made other cruel statements, including allegations that Sanya dressed like a prostitute, and they made it clear they wanted her to stay away from her hometown after she separated from her husband. On the afternoon of July 18, 2022, seven months after Sanya filed for divorce, Ahmed's family reported him missing from the Atlanta area, where he'd moved during the separation. At the request of authorities in Georgia, Chicago police conducted a welfare check at Sanya's residence, where they found the young woman and her estranged husband dead from gunshot wounds. Ahmed had gained access to the building by setting up an appointment to tour apartments with a realtor. He'd previously been banned from the building, but security didn't check his ID that day. After viewing a few units, he told the realtor that he was going to meet up with some friends who lived in the building, and they went their separate ways. Sanya's death sparked larger, ongoing discussions about the topic of divorce and the relationship between its taboo nature and the potentially life-endangering gender violence in the South Asian community. Her family declined to comment on her death, and leftover money from a crowdfunding campaign for funeral expenses was returned to donors after plans to donate it to anti-domestic violence organizations were met with conflict. 8. Rory Teasley as a born entertainer, 28-year-old Rory Teasley was loved among his more than 200,000 TikTok followers for his easygoing, naturally likable personality and jovial sense of humor. In early 2022, the Michigan-based content creator posted a light-hearted video about getting older. Just days later, in a cruel twist of irony, he was fatally assaulted at his home in Pontiac. Police responded to the scene after receiving a 9-11 call from Teasley's boyfriend of 10 years, the Quenjobo Watkins, who told the dispatcher that the couple had gotten into an altercation. Watkins reportedly told officers that Teasley was sleeping on the living room sofa, only for them to quickly discover that he was unresponsive and not breathing. It was unfortunately too late to save his life. According to an arrest report, Teasley and Watkins got into an argument while playing the video game Overwatch. The disagreement became physical, and Watkins choked Teasley to death. In a statement, Sheriff Michael Bouchard expressed his dismay at what he described as a nationwide trend of people resorting to violence over trivial and insignificant disagreements, which in Teasley and Watkins' cases claimed the life of one man and ruined the life of another. 
Watkins was charged with second-degree murder and held without bond while the case played out in court. He pleaded no contest to the charge in early 2023, right before he was scheduled to go to trial. Under Michigan law, a no contest plea is not an admission of guilt, but it's treated like one when it comes to imposing a criminal sentence. A second-degree murder conviction can carry a term of up to life in prison, but can also come with a shorter term and the possibility of parole. According to jail records, Watkins is currently being held in Oakland County lockup, where he appears to be awaiting sentencing. 7. Ali Abu Laban From the outside looking in, Ali Nasser Abu Laban and his wife Anna were living the American dream. Based on the image they put out to the world, they were a young, successful couple and doting parents to their young child, living happily together in a San Diego luxury high-rise. The pair were both very active on social media and could each be considered an influencer in their own right. But Ali was especially popular for his comedy skits, which earned him a TikTok following of over a million fans. He and Anna often feature one another in their videos, further bolstering their image of a picture-perfect, drama-free marriage and family life. But things were far less peachy behind closed doors. Friends of the couple would later say that Ali's fame became a bone of contention in the relationship, with Anna often suspecting him of cheating and growing increasingly jealous of the attention her husband received from female fans. Tensions between the pair soon gave way to physical violence, resulting in nine police responses to their 35th floor condo over a three-month period in 2021. After the string of domestic incidents, Ali moved out at Anna's request and checked into a hotel. Anna reportedly planned to ask for a restraining order against Ali and file for divorce, but she never got the opportunity to follow through with her intentions. Just three days after leaving the home, Ali allegedly returned, trashed the place, installed a listening device on his daughter's tablet, and left again. Just hours later, someone entered the condo and shot Anna in the head at point-blank range before firing multiple bullets into her friend, Rayburn Cadernas Barron. According to law enforcement, Ali confessed to killing the victims in a conversation with his mother. He was also reportedly seen leaving the condo on surveillance footage right around the time of the murders. Just hours after the deadly shooting, Ali was booked into jail on two counts of first-degree murder. He pleaded not guilty and is being held without bail while awaiting trial, which was scheduled for May 2023 but appears to be delayed. In a bizarre jailhouse interview with Fox 5 shortly after the double murder, Ali said he heard Baron's voice while listening in on the bug he installed. In his words, he freaked out and rushed over to the condo, praying desperately that he wouldn't find Anna hooking up with another man. Prosecutors believe that Baron and Anna were just friends, but that Baron's mere presence in the home was enough to tip Ali over the edge into a murderous rage. Of course, regardless of the nature of the victim's relationship, killing is never the answer. The outcome of the case remains to be seen. 6. Matima Miller Better known by his TikTok names Swavy and Babyface S, 19-year-old Matima Miller was a talented dancer with nearly 3 million followers. But he never got to see how far his talent would take him because he was shot dead in broad daylight outside his home in Wilmington, Delaware one morning in July of 2021. His mother witnessed his excruciating final moments. Just two days after the murder, as law enforcement worked to identify a suspect, controversial talk show host Wendy Williams announced Swavy's death during the Hot Topic segment of her talk show. She peppered the news with an array of bizarre and arguably insensitive comments that left viewers both shocked and appalled. When the teen's picture appeared on the screen, Williams said, I have no idea who this person is, neither does one person in the building. She then described Swavy as a TikTok star with more followers than her. An equally tone-deaf producer chimed in about how Williams is more popular than Swavy on Instagram. The strange commentary went on for over a minute before Williams finally mentioned who Swavy was and that he'd been murdered. 
To add to an already cringe-worthy display, she seemed confused about the details and repeatedly asked the producer to confirm that Swavy was the victim. Outraged viewers accused Williams of being classless, demeaning, and disrespectful to the deceased young star. Swavy's mother was also deeply offended. In an interview with CBS3, she summed her thoughts up into a simple but poignant statement, wondering out loud, as a mother, Wendy Williams, how dare you? Swavy's killer remained at large for five months before authorities finally announced the arrest of 18-year-old Israel Lecomte, who was accused of killing both Swavy and another victim named Quinton Dorsey. In early 2022, Lecomte was indicted on 12 federal charges, including two counts of first-degree murder and four felony gun counts. The case appears to be ongoing. 5. Carla Pardini In a chilling scenario that sounds like it came straight out of a Scream movie, a popular 21-year-old TikToker named Carla Pardini received a mysterious call around 10.30 p.m. one night in September 2022. She followed the caller's instructions to step outside her house in Mexico's Sinaloa state and never returned home. Authorities found the young woman's lifeless, bullet-riddled body at a nearby intersection the next day. Based on the evidence, it was clear that Pardini was lured outside and ambushed. Several witnesses reported seeing armed individuals lurking in the area prior to the attack, but nobody was able to identify the suspects. Shortly after the murder, authorities said that they were treating the case as a femicide, which is defined as the intentional killing of women or girls because they are female. In a statement, police told the public that they were carrying out the investigation in utmost secrecy to prevent any possible suspects from being alerted ahead of an arrest. The person or people responsible for the gender-motivated hate crime remain at large. In keeping with their vow to investigate in secrecy, authorities have released few details about their progress towards solving the case, leaving it unclear whether they're close to making any arrests. Pandini had a 90,000-strong TikTok following before her death, and her fanbase only grew in the days and weeks following her murder. In her last three videos, she posted captions in Spanish that translate to When they tell I can't stand you, and, in short, I hope you don't like me. Some people have raised the possibility that the cryptic messages were directed at someone who was bothering Pardini, but investigators didn't say whether they thought there was a connection between the videos and the social media star's death. 4. Travis Honcho Taylor Also known as Taco and Honcho da Boss, 39-year-old Travis Honcho Taylor was an up-and-coming TikTok star from Columbia, South Carolina. In addition to the more than 280,000 followers he attracted through his online persona, he was well-liked in his community for his good-natured personality and unique sense of humor. In other words, to those who knew and followed him, he was an all-around good guy. Sadly, tragedy struck during the early morning hours of April 8, 2023. While responding to a report of shots fired, Richland County Sheriff's deputies found Honcho face down and unresponsive in the hallway of an apartment building with multiple gunshot wounds to his upper torso. He was pronounced dead at a local hospital. Friends, family, and fans were devastated by Honcho's sudden death at the hands of what appeared to be a senseless act of violence. Nine days later, authorities announced the arrest of suspects Daniel Goodwin Jr. and Andre Daniels, who were each charged with one count of murder. Investigators have released few details about the circumstances leading up to the shooting, beyond revealing that the suspects and the victim were all at the same nightclub before the murder took place. At the time of the killing, Daniel Goodwin was out on bond for his alleged role in a murder that occurred in 2019 in nearby Orangeburg County. In a statement, Richland County Sheriff Leon Lott described Goodwin's alleged participation in yet another murder as a worst-case scenario of the catch-and-release strategy of granting freedom to suspects of violent crimes. 3. Eric Dodds and John Dacre Von Collier 29-year-old Dakota Bradshaw's future was cut short by a fatal gunshot on August 1, 2022. Walker County Sheriff's deputies found him clinging to life inside his Rossville, Georgia home while responding to a call about shots fired. 
Bradshaw was rushed to the hospital, where he died from his injuries. Witnesses told law enforcement that they saw a red truck and a blue Dodge Challenger speeding away from the scene, but authorities initially had little else to go on in the way of identifying the suspects. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation joined the case and soon narrowed in on 23-year-olds Eric Dodds and John De Cavon Collier, who were well-known on TikTok and OnlyFans for their LGBTQ friendly content. Collier was the first suspect to be publicly named. In response to the announcement, Dodds made a TikTok video claiming his partner was innocent. He even created a GoFundMe crowdfunding campaign to raise money for Collier's legal defense. Both men were arrested in Huntsville, Alabama, a few weeks after Branshaw's murder. Authorities released limited details about the case until nearly three months later, when the suspects were formally indicted on murder charges. During the indictment hearing, GBI agent Daniel Nicholson testified that he'd received information from a third person who was allegedly involved in the shooting named Daja Collins. According to Ms. Collins' version of events, the murder was motivated by a plot to retrieve the Blue Dodge Challenger, which was registered in Collier's name, from Bradshaw's property where it was parked. Nicholson said that Collins told him she was tasked with driving the Challenger away from the scene. She allegedly rode to Bradshaw's home with Dodds, Collier, and others in the red truck the witnesses spotted at the scene, and she claimed that everyone was armed. During her interview with Agent Nicholson, the young woman reportedly described Dodds as being in a highly emotional state and crying with rage during the drive to Bradshaw's property. She reported hearing four or five gunshots as she rushed from the trunk to the Challenger and sped away. A fourth suspect, Darius Woods, was captured in Chattanooga, Tennessee, a few days after the indictment hearing after being on the run for more than two months. In a statement, GBI Special Agent Joe Montgomery described the investigation as labor and paper intensive, with more than 50 search warrants being carried out on social media, cell phones, homes, and people. According to the most recent news updates, all four suspects remain in custody while awaiting the next steps in their case. 2. Hardis Najafi In September 2022, a 22-year-old Iranian woman named Masa Amini died under suspicious circumstances after being arrested by the country's morality police, leading to a widespread speculation that she was beaten to death by law enforcement for not wearing her hijab. The disturbing tragedy sparked Iran's biggest women's rights protest since at least 2009, if not earlier. Just five days after Amini's death, a 22-year-old Iranian TikToker named Hadis Najafi was killed in an onslaught of bullets while participating in a protest in the city of Karaj. According to reports, she was shot at least six times in the face, hand, neck, heart, and torso. Her family said that she was struck by more than 20 bullets. Iranian authorities blamed the murder on protesters, claiming that Najafi was shot with weapons that are not used by police. But other activists, as well as Najafi's family, strongly refuted this claim, arguing that the young woman was murdered by the country's security forces. To add to the suspicion, Najafi's loved ones said that they were not allowed to see her in the hospital and that police officers physically barred them from going near her. Shortly after Najafi's death, a video circulated online of a young woman tying her hair into a ponytail before joining a protest. Social media rumors falsely claimed that the woman in the video was Najafi, when it actually featured another brave young activist. But Najafi was also an avid social media user who had a solid TikTok following and both women protested for a shared vision of a peaceful country where women have basic rights. Najafi's death only further fueled the demonstrations against the government, which are ongoing. Sadly, more protesters have died under suspicious circumstances, and their funerals have become ridden with violence at state hands. In at least three cases analyzed by the Washington Post, Footage, photos, and eyewitness accounts have produced clear evidence of Iranian security forces using lethal force against funeral attendees. As the death count continues to accumulate, the masses continue to bravely defy the authorities, 
including by using TikTok and other social media, to raise awareness and gain support in their fight against state-sponsored repression. 1. Sonali Fogat As a career actress and politician from India's Haryana state, Sonali Fogat was used to talking in front of an audience before she became a TikToker, so it was only natural that she extended her influence to social media. When the 42-year-old died after being found unresponsive in her hotel room during a trip to Goa in August of 2022, it initially appeared to be the result of cardiac arrest. But an autopsy report found multiple blunt force injuries on her body, and her death was ruled a suspected homicide. As a fearlessly opinionated and outspoken woman with a successful high-paying career, it was certainly possible from multiple angles that someone wanted Fogad dead. Authorities were now tasked with figuring out whether the motive had any connection to her leadership roles in two of India's political parties, if perhaps a disgruntled social media follower had targeted her, or if the crime was rooted closer to home. The investigation yielded surveillance footage of Fogat in the company of her personal assistant, Sudhir Sangwan, at a local beach bar the night before her death. In the video, Sangwan could be seen pouring a drink down Fogat's throat. Shortly thereafter, she appeared unsteady on her feet and was visibly struggling to walk on her own. Further evidence suggested that someone drugged his boss with a heavy dose of MDMA, which caused her to spend two hours throwing up in the bathroom of a nightclub after leaving the beach bar. After the club closed at around 4.30 in the morning, witnesses reportedly observed Fogat being carried by Sangwan and an alleged accomplice, who was later identified as Sukhwain Davasi. The men were seen taking Fogat to the resort where she was staying just a few hours before she was taken to the hospital and declared dead on arrival. According to investigators from India's Central Bureau of Investigation, who took over the case at the request of Fogart's family after local authorities failed to produce answers regarding her death, the suspects allegedly overdosed Fogart as part of a sinister plot to get their hands on her money and property. Sangwan and Wasi face murder charges, and three other suspects have been charged in connection with Fogart's death, including the owner of the beach bar she was seen at with Sangwan and the caretaker at the resort where she was staying. The wheels of justice turn notoriously slowly in India, which is infamous for having one of the world's most snail-paced legal systems. It'll give the suspects a lot of time to think about their alleged crimes as they languish with an uncertain future and the very real possibility of a prison sentence looming over their heads. Thanks for watching. If you had to choose, would you give up social media for a year in exchange for living rent free at a home of your choosing during that same time period? Or is it so important for you to remain connected that you'd pass up the opportunity? Let us know in the comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.